the hidden pitfalls and opportunities of the 401k. 401ks are a great way to reduce your tax liability and save for retirement. They're also a great way to get stuck in mediocrity. You start to care more and more about maintaining mediocrity than you do about really going after your goals, assuming you have great goals to begin with. But that isn't the only problem. There are several others that you should know about as well. I'll talk about them and the options you have, including one I'm sure you've never heard of in this video. So like, subscribe, click the notification bell if you get any value out of this video. And if you want more great content just like this, I'm Derek West, you're watching Finance Squared. Let's dive right in and talk about why 401ks are good. A 401k is a type of retirement plan that is sponsored by an employer. Many people, many, many people in the United States have 401k plans as they are provided by their employers and they allow them the opportunity and the option to invest a portion of their pre-tax income for retirement. The money in a 401k account is invested in a variety of investment options including stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs in many cases. The primary benefits of a 401k is that it provides tax deferred growth, not tax free, tax deferred. That's an important concept you'll hear more about in this video. This means that the money that you contribute to your 401k plan is not taxed until you withdraw it. This can help you save a significant amount of money in tax over the long term. With a long term strategy to be accumulated as much money as possible into this account to minimize your tax liability. In addition, many employers offer matching contributions, which means that they will match your contributions up to a certain percentage. This can be a great way to increase your savings and maximize your returns. Obviously, there are advantages to a 401k. Let's talk about them. There are several advantages to having a 401k plan. One of the biggest advantages is that it provides tax deferred growth, which can help you save money and taxes over the long term. In addition to that, 401k plans are relatively easy to set up and manage. You can usually do it online. And most companies offer resources to help you understand and manage your investments. Another advantage of a 401k is that it can provide you with a steady stream of income in retirement. Many 401k plans offer annuities, which can provide a guaranteed income that you can rely on in retirement. Having a 401k plan can help you save money for retirement. By investing a portion of your income in a 401k, you can ensure that you are setting aside money for your retirement years. One of the uh, intricacies, to put it uh, nicely, is that 401k plans, uh, they sort of have a little bit of complication to make sure that you maximize your contributions. And do they need to understand your 401k contribution rules? Let's talk about that. When it comes to contributing to a 401k, there are a few things you need to keep in mind. First, you should understand the contribution limits. The IRS, well, they set a limit on the amount that you can contribute to your 401k plan each year. This limit is adjusted periodically. So it's important to stay up to date on the latest limit, which is set. For example, in the year 2023, the limit is $22,500. Quite a bit of money if you're planning for a mediocre retirement, to put it kind of. In addition, you should understand the tax implications of your contribution. Contributing to a 401k, well, they're made with pre-tax dollars, which means that you can deduct them from your taxable income. So you'll have to pay income tax on the amount that you borrow, if you borrow any. Finally, it's important to understand any fees associated with your 401k plan. Many 401k plans charge fees for management and other services. Any of these fees can eat into whatever gains you get out of the 401k. So just be aware. We talked about the advantages of investing in a 401k. There are also some expected and unexpected disadvantages that you need to be aware of, including high fees, tax penalties, limited investment options, and restrictions on withdrawals. One of the biggest drawbacks of investing in a 401k are the high fees associated with it. Many 401k plans charge an annual fee, as well as fees for buying and selling investments. These fees can add up quickly, eating into your returns over time. In addition to that, you may have to pay an extra fee if you want to access professional investment advice. Let's talk about the tax penalties. Another disadvantage of investing in a 401k is that you may be subjected to tax penalties if you withdraw money before you reach retirement age. The IRS imposes a 10% penalty on withdrawals, as well as regular income taxes. This means that you could end up owing more in taxes than you expected. Now, there's a very valid school of thought that this is indeed a good thing. And that school of thought I don't necessarily disagree with. If your goal was to maximize your 401k, that is. Keeping in mind that maximizing your 401k doesn't necessarily mean you're maximizing your wealth creation. In any case, penalties and taxes effectively encourage you to leave your money in your 401k as long as possible, theoretically maximizing your investment window. Again, I don't disagree with that in principle. In practice, the investment options that are typically available through most 401k plans can leave much to be desired to maximize those investments. Limited investment options in a 401k can be a little bit of a problem. While 401ks can offer a wide range of investments, the selection, well, it can be limited. Many plans offer a few choices and the investments may not be diversified enough to meet your needs or they may not be aggressive enough to maximize your investment horizon. Particularly if you're a millennial or even younger 
in your 20s, a Zoomer of some kind, and you're a long way off from retirement. So if you have 20, 25, 30 or more years until your retirement, i.e. you're less than 30 years old, your investments should be more aggressive and should be the most aggressive because you have a long time to make up for any losses over the long haul. And aggressive investments tend to be the riskiest, but also the most rewarding if they pay off. And many 401k plans don't give you access to these types of investments. For example, individual stocks or bonds. And this can limit your ability to customize your portfolio to meet your investment needs. Let's talk about the restriction on withdrawing your own money from your 401k. 401ks have restrictions on when and how you can withdraw money. You can't withdraw money before you reach retirement age without incurring a 10% penalty. And you may have to wait until you're 70 and a half years old before you can take distribution. This can be a problem if you need access to your money before then. This is one of many reasons why people tell you, if you have a 401k, to leave your money in for as long as possible and to keep funding your 401k for as long as possible, which is actually great advice. Taking your money out before your retirement age 65-ish, can incur a enormous penalty and therefore reduce the amount of returns you get in that time frame. At the same time, however, like we talked about earlier, because of the limited investment options that you have, maximizing your investments becomes a little bit of a challenge when you leave your money in a 401k, particularly if you're not just trying to be mediocre, but you're trying to exceed your own expectations. So what can you do? What action items can you take? If you're a more ambitious individual and you just don't want to have an average retirement and you really want to take the leap and the chance to grow your wealth as much as possible, what action items can you take? Let's discuss. So the problems with 401k, well, they're quite clear. On this channel, we just don't talk about the problems. We elucidate the solutions. So what can you do? Well, a common thing to do is just manage your 401k as well as possible. When it comes to managing your 401k, there are a few strategies that can help you maximize your returns. First things first, you should take advantage of any employer contributions. As you may know, if you work in a nine to five, many employers offer matching contributions up to a certain percentage. An example would be taking 2% of your paycheck, your employer would match another 2%. There are many different formulas that different employers use, but you should take them up on their offer. That is technically in addition to your salary. So for example, if you're only making, to keep the math simple, if you make $1,000 a month and you contribute 2% of that $1,000 a month to your 401k and you have an employer match of 2%, you're actually making $1,020 because your employer is matching 2% of your contributions to your 401k. Now that's money that you don't have access to for the reasons that are discussed on this channel and earlier in this video. So don't get too happy, but in effect, you have a larger salary than you even realize if you take your employer up on their 401k contributions. It's not just that. Even if you were to reach your limit for the tax year that you're in, your employer could, and some employers do, but not all of them, but your employer could still contribute to your 401k plan up to a certain amount as defined by the IRS year over year. Different employers have different policies on how they execute that. So it's important to keep up to date on your employer's rules as well. But if you're one of the lucky ones and they actually keep contributing after you have hit your limit, then your 401k has the potential to become huge. Also, one of the positive trends for 401k plan participants is that the contribution limits have been going up over the last couple of years. For the 2023 tax year, the annual contribution limit has been set to $22,500. So with your employer's matching contributions, depending on the specifics of their employment, you actually could put away greater than $25,000 per year for your retirement. If you keep that level of contribution up for 25 years, your 401k could be worth well over a million dollars doing basic future value of money calculations. Make sure your 401k investments are correctly allocated. Depending on your investment options and your employer, you may be left with subpar investment options, the ones that you do have you need to make sure you maximize them. If you can only invest in target funds, that is to say your 401k plan custodian only offers you target fund investments that target a certain retirement year, which technically adjusts your asset allocation to more risky or less risky based on your investment horizon, then make sure you're picking a target fund that matches that investment horizon. If you have the option to invest in more specialized index funds or, or <gasps> ETFs, and then make sure you're invested in index funds that are relatively broad-based and reflect possible future growth in the market in general. You've heard quite a bit about the S&P 500 or the Russell 2000. If you have the opportunity, make sure you put money into index funds like that. If your 401k allows you to invest in single stocks or bonds, well, at that point, you have a very fortunate situation. But with great power comes great responsibility. And you'll need to do more research to find the right portfolio to maximize your investment opportunities. This next one should go without saying that you should review your investments regularly. Things change in markets very quickly. And as time moves on, your opportunity for aggressive investment options, well, they dwindle. It's important to stay up to date on the performance of your investments and make sure that your portfolio is aligned with your goals. Now, as you go without saying, 
pay attention to the tax rates, as I'm sure you already are. But this is really important. If you're pulling any money out of your 401k or liquidating it all together. That money then becomes taxed as income and your tax bracket will determine how big of a chunk Uncle Sam takes as his cut. There are a number of options out there for maximizing your 401k. One option that a lot of people talk about is rolling over their 401k into another type of account. Let's talk about that. A common thing for people to do is to roll or switch over their 401k to another type of account, such as an IRA or a Roth IRA. The reason that an individual might want to do this is that they want to keep their 401k rolling if and when they switch employers or to switch to a different account type with different rules and presumably different benefits. For example, if you roll your 401k into a Roth IRA, you are now contributing after tax dollars. Your investments still grow tax free and you can more or less make tax and penalty free withdrawals after you turn 59 and a half. But there are problems with this. As Roth IRAs, well, they have very similar problems to 401ks. With Roth IRAs, you can't really contribute a large amount, particularly if you're a large income earner. The rules are complicated. If you make less than $129,000 a year, you can contribute up to $6,500 to a Roth IRA. If you make $144,000 or more, you're ineligible to contribute to a Roth IRA. Bummer. If you're making $144,000, you may have other investment opportunities. So maybe it evens out. Those are additional problems with the Roth IRA uh, as opposed to the 401k. But there are more options out there. Among the options that people consider when they have a 401k that they want to maximize, that they want to use to maximize their wealth is to pull that money out and to self-invest. Pulling money out of your 401k is generally considered a terrible idea. And I'm not one to disagree. There are generally two ways to pull money out of your 401k. Basically, Take a loan from your 401k and pay it back over time. This is a common thing people do to get money for a down payment for a house to live in or an investment property. The thought being that they're really investing in themselves and paying themselves the interest. So, you know, what's the big deal? Well, actually, you owe money to the 401k custodian. And if for some reason you lose your job, you still owe that money. Imagine losing your job and not only having no income, but also owing your old employer, you know, the 401k custodian, money in addition to that. That is a situation that you don't want to find yourself in. The other way people take money out of their 401 case is by just liquidating it. Again, this is generally a bad idea. The reasons are multifold, as we've already discussed. The taxes and penalties, they're no joke. Depending on your income level, at the time you're pulling your funding, you could be faced with an enormous loss in your investment principal and growth. Most people who pull money out of their 401k do it to load up on debt. For example, getting money to put a down payment for a house or to expand on a house they already own. All bad ways to just pile up debt upon debt and to not grow your wealth. So basically, you're stuck with money that you can't access until you're 59 and a half, living in mediocrity, only to be barely able to afford your retirement. What a way to go, am I right? What if you could turn your 401k from an anchor of mediocrity to an engine of personal growth and wealth expansion? There is actually a way to do that that not a lot of people talk about. Turning your 401k into a self-funded startup. This option is seldom talked about, but it might be the smartest way to take what you have saved and invested in your 401k and to turn it into a business that can grow and expand your career like you never thought possible. Do you think you have a great idea that can turn ChatGPT into a real business that provides real value to people, but you just don't have the cash lying around to hire developers or the time to learn it yourself? Maybe you have your eye on a franchise that could turn into something big for you. Franchises, along with real estate, are among some of the more common and easiest ways for regular people to grow their wealth exponentially. But what if you don't have the money for the down payment? Well, depending on your situation, obviously you may in fact have the money. It could be lying around in your 401k, but we've discussed on this channel and in this video, as a matter of fact, the problems, the various and innumerable problems with some of the ways of accessing money in your 401k, borrowing from it, just outright cashing it out, etc. Those methods, they're fraught with complications and penalties. There is an alternative. Let's talk about that. You can break it down into four separate steps. One, create a company. This part is easy, legal zoom, et cetera. There are multiple ways that you can create companies out there, but this company is going to have a specific purpose. And that purpose is in part, grow your wealth. Because the second step is to have a 401k created for that company. The third step is to roll your existing 401k over into that new 401k for the company you just created. The fourth step is then invest in the company you just formed using the new 401k by purchasing private stock in that new company that you just made. There are a couple of advantages to this untalked about mechanism. One of them being, you can form a new business to generate cash flow without taking out loans. Another one being the money you invest in this new business is free from tax penalties that are normally associated with 401ks and IRAs. You know, we talked about the 10% if you've not hit the retirement age plus income tax penalties, all that jazz. And you can do all this completely legally. Like anything else, funding your business through a self-directed 401k, it's not a perfect solution. 
If you're looking to expand on your side hustle and see if you can just get it to grow, if you self-direct your 401k funding, you have to first roll over your 401k, meaning that you likely will have to leave your current employer. If you have no plans to do that at this time, and are just trying to find a way to finance the expansion of a side hustle that you think can work, then this wouldn't be a good option for you. Another thing you want to consider is that this is pretty complicated. It might be more complicated than rolling over your 401k to an IRA or something like that. While it is legal, there could be many pitfalls along the way. And this channel is not a channel for financial advice. It's only for financial education and entertainment. Watching this video is not a great way to get the knowledge and the skills you'll need to pull this kind of trick off. I would suggest, and I would definitely recommend, although I don't recommend anything, maybe that wording is inappropriate. If it's something that you wanna do, you definitely should speak with an accountant or someone specialized in this particular field. If you don't do it right, there could be complications, both legal and financial. So don't put yourself in that situation. Another thing you wanna consider is that this is not free money. Now, again, it's not necessarily a downside. You just need to realize that you're not accessing your 401k money tax penalty free. You're creating a vehicle to invest in a business that you create as opposed to just investing in an S&P index fund. An S&P index fund does all the growth for you. Your self-directed business will need your guidance and your skill to grow. The question then becomes, do you have the skills to make it grow? Another key point is that the restrictions on taking money out of your 401k still exist with this method. It's just that you can now use that money to invest in yourself and your dreams and your company, and not just in a generic group of stocks in a 401k plan that your 401k custodian picks for you. A lot more needs to be said and can be said about this topic. Particularly since I haven't heard much about this one from anywhere else, and I might as well be the one to do it. So make sure you subscribe with the notification bell turned on so you're along the ride for the scenic drive. And make sure to like this video if you liked this video. And remember, a goal without a plan is a wish. A goal with a plan and no action is a wish list. Take it easy, gang. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.